Google Workspace and Microsoft 365 are pretty much the kings of productivity. We've never actually compared these two here on the channel, so it's about time we do. And if you're scratching your head wondering which cloud productivity suite is best for you, well, you're in the right place, okay? Because today I'm gonna put them side by side and compare what they have to offer. And we'll look at all the core features, break down security tools, and explore which offers the best value for money. So let's get stuck into it. I'm going to jump straight into productivity and collaboration. And after all, that's what these tools are built around. So first up, let's talk about the bread and butter. Okay, creating and editing documents. Yes, both suites give you documents, spreadsheets and presentations, but there are some key differences that you need to know about. Okay, Google built workspace from the ground up for cloud collaboration, while Microsoft adapted their powerful desktop tools for the online era. Google's approach is all about simplicity and collaboration. Okay, take Google Docs. You know, it's clean, it's intuitive, we've all used it. The menu structure is simpler and most use functions are immediately visible while advanced features are tucked into menus. Okay, but if you're loyal to Microsoft, Word may feel more natural to you. That familiar ribbon interface, you know, while more complex, has been muscle memory for many of us since the early 2000s. I mean, I still remember using that in school and university and everything. When working together in real time, both Google Docs and Word let you see your teammates edits as they happen. You see other people's cursors, and if you hover over these icons, a small box will appear with the person's name. In Google Docs though, you get color-coded highlights showing exactly what text they're selecting and those little profile pictures in the top right corner show you who's currently viewing the document both allow you to see exactly who made what changes with timestamps thanks to version history okay this has saved me a lot of times word has an even cooler feature for teamwork you can choose to track everyone's edits or just your own we use Google Docs for all our articles okay our writers can draft articles editors can review them and we can all leave feedback right there in the document. Pretty handy. When someone has a question, there's a meet button right in the corner that instantly starts a video call. And this integration means you can go from editing to discussing with a teammate without having to send meeting links or switching between apps and you know the hassle. But Word hasn't caught up in this area yet. You still need to set up calls separately through Teams. Google Docs has some features you might expect to find in Word's browser version but don't like charts watermarks section breaks signature lines and bibliography and citations pretty handy if you're working on academic papers or formal documents but words desktop version on the other hand packs more features under the hood okay we have to be honest here you're getting all the features I just mentioned plus some advanced options you can add interactive elements to your documents like custom forms and buttons you can also insert a cover page there's more like being able to insert things like PDFs and Excel charts. Heck, I can even M a PowerPoint presentation in a Word doc. For more modern day vibes, you can even add a GIF to your document and drop in some audio files. Word Online supports table sorting, but the desktop app offers additional features like table to text, text to table, and the ability to M Excel tables. Okay, when it comes to spreadsheets, both platforms handle the basics similarly. You can add form formulas, get automatic suggestions as you type, and use filters to organize your data. They both save automatically and let you track version history. That's super, super practical and convenient. I cannot be honest enough. For Google Sheets, version history is very easily accessible. All you have to do is click the clock icon in the top right corner. Google Sheets also lets you name specific versions, which is great for easily finding a particular previous version of a spreadsheet. In Excel Online, on the other hand, you have to click the down arrow next to the file name, then select version history. Excel is built for power users and specialized needs. 
Okay, and if you're using advanced features like the Hyperion add-on, or if you need specialized visualization options like 3D pyramid charts or Pi of Pi charts, Excel is your go-to choice. Both platforms offer macro recording capabilities, but they do it differently. Excel uses Visual Basic Editor, while Google Sheets integrates with Google Apps Scripts. They both let you set up notifications when changes are made. Excel relies on OneDrive for these notifications, and Sheets provides them directly within the app. For presentations, PowerPoint and Google Slides share many core features. Um, you know, both platforms support real-time collaboration. In PowerPoint, you can collaborate live through SharePoint or OneDrive, while in Google Slides, collaboration happens directly in the application. So when you share a presentation, your collaborators can edit, comment and assign tasks depending on their access level. Both suites handle version history, though they integrate with different storage systems. PowerPoint uses SharePoint or OneDrive, while Slides uses Google Drive. Both also support offline access and automatic saving. Again, super practical. When it comes to adding content, both let you work with images. For charts, PowerPoint integrates with Excel, while Slides naturally works with Google Sheets. And both platforms offer a whole ecosystem of productivity tools. Microsoft gives you OneNote for note-taking, forms for surveys, and Planner for task management. Google counters, okay, with Keep, for quick notes, its own spin on forms for surveys, and tasks for to-dos. And both have their AI tools, by the way. Microsoft has Microsoft 365 Copilot Chat, and Google, of course, has Gemini. Microsoft includes creativity tools like Clipchamp, which is a video editing platform, and Designer, a graphic design and image editing app powered by AI. Google Workspace doesn't currently offer similar built-in tools, though, but there are many third-party video editing tools and design softwares that can integrate with Google Workspace, so you have options. Each suite approaches integration differently, though. Microsoft 365 feels like a collection of apps that just work together when needed. Google Workspace, on the other hand, feels more like one seamless experience where everything's connected by default. So let's talk about team communication, because at the end of the day, this is what these tools are made for, bringing people together, hopefully. Both suites now offer video conferencing, Okay, Meet for Google and Teams for Microsoft. And both allow meeting recordings, screen sharing, breakout rooms, and integrated whiteboarding. If you have someone who loves to take notes and present. Now you can start Meet calls directly from within Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides through a present to a meeting button or the Meet sidebar integration. Okay, and imagine you're reviewing a spreadsheet with your team, and instead of scheduling a separate meeting, you just click a button and start discussing it right there, right then. Game changer for remote teams, like insane. However, for Microsoft 365, you can start a team calls directly from within a Word document or Excel spreadsheet. You actually need to initiate the call from Teams itself. For emails, Gmail is the most popular email service among individual users. Many business users still gravitate towards Outlook because it's you know a seamless integration with Microsoft suite of Office applications, as well as you know the whole Windows operating system, of course. Storage is handled by Drive for Google and One drive from Microsoft, and both platforms offer desktop apps for both Windows and Mac OS, but neither has a Linux desktop app. Both offer robust file sharing and syncing capabilities though. One nice touch with Drive is how it handles Microsoft Office files. Okay, you can edit them right in your browser without converting them. Super easy. So for file sizes, OneDrive lets you upload files up to 250 gigabytes and Google Drive lets you upload files up to five terabytes. Though they do have other file limits for docs, spreadsheets, or presentations. Let's get into security and privacy, because this is important. And if you can't trust a platform with your data, what's the point? 
and both Google and Microsoft have had their oops moments. Remember 2019, Google's private conversation leak? And Microsoft, well, they're not off the hook either. Take Copilot Plus, for example. Some privacy watchdogs are calling it a complete nightmare. Why? The technology can take screenshots of your device activities every two seconds. So imagine it accidentally captures sensitive info like passwords or confidential documents. Not exactly the kind of privacy thing you're looking for, right? Scandals aside, the tech giants do a solid job of ensuring cyber attacks don't lead to people accessing your data. They're both using industry standard encryption when your data is in transit and when it's resting on their servers. Google goes a little further by offering client-side encryption on some of its workspace plans. And this means even Google or any third party can't peek at your stuff. Works for Drive, Docs, Gmail, Calendar, and Meet. Pretty good to know. The only downside, okay, is that it's only available on the Enterprise Plus and Education plans. Not making it widely available is bad practice in my book. Because without client-side encryption, Google can essentially scan your data. And it does. Here's a snippet from the privacy policy I dug out. We analyze your content to help us detect abuse such as spam, malware, and illegal content. We also use algorithms to recognize patterns in data. Of course, most people aren't doing something illegal, yet their data and documents are still accessible. So what data do these companies actually collect? Well, I'll start with Google. We're talking about the usual stuff. Account information, what you're doing with their services, what services you're using, and of course, where you are. Google says they're not selling your details to the highest bidder. They say they don't share this personal info with outside companies or individuals as well. And technically, that's true. Technically, what they don't advertise is that they don't need to sell your data because they're using it themselves to power their AdSense network. That's how they make most of their money, by the way, by analyzing your data internally to serve targeted ads across the internet. Moving on to Microsoft, it collects the same data as Google and they make the same claim about not selling it either. Instead, they say they're just using it to improve their services, which to our mind is much too vague. I mean, what does that even mean? Again, there's no client-side encryption available with Microsoft services, so keep that in mind. Both Google and Microsoft include two-factor authentication and single sign-on, and they both add an extra layer of security when accessing your accounts. Let's talk pricing. Let's start with Google Workspace. Google Workspace starts with a business starter plan. It's their entry-level offering, giving you the basics like custom email, video calls, and some cloud storage. It's a solid choice for small teams just getting started. Now, if you need more storage, there's a business standard. Okay, you're looking at two terabytes of storage and you can squeeze up to 150 people into a video call. And they add some nice two halves like noise cancellation for meat. It's for when your business is growing and so do your storage needs, you know, of course. Then there's the business plus plan. Okay, it gives you up to five terabyte of storage and meetings for up to 500 people. You also get enhanced security features. For the big players, there's the enterprise plan. All plans feature a free two week trial, so you can start to try it out before signing up. See what you like. Now, let's hop over to Microsoft 365. Their basic business plan gets you one terabyte of storage per user, web version of Office apps and Teams for communication. There's also the business plan with one terabyte terabyte of storage per user and the business standard plan comes with one terabyte of storage as well. Plus you get desktop versions of office apps and some features like webinar hosting, video editing and design tools with Clipchamp. Their premium plan is a little pricier than Google's top tier plan but it comes with advanced security features and device management. All right time for the verdict. Look Microsoft 365 is solid. It's solid. It's got the familiar office feel, and if you're knee deep in the Microsoft ecosystem, it might be your go-to. But Google Workspace is hard to beat, okay? I have to be honest, and I've gotta say, Google Workspace gets my vote. I've been using it for years with my team of 80 people, all working remotely. Google Workspace just, I don't know, flows better, and it edges our Microsoft in the security department as well. So what do you think? Are you team Google or team Microsoft? 
Or have you found another solution altogether? Okay, I would really like to know. So drop a comment below and let me know. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more insights. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.